Well, if you're watching this close to the fall season, it means they're back. They're styrofoam. They're sometimes expensive. They're usually expensive. They're funkins. They're fail coconuts, as I said many years ago, and continue to say, and you can do so much better. So the pumpkins that I make have gone through a little evolution. And, um, yeah. We're done with those things. I think we can do just a little bit better. This is pumpkin version 2.0 featuring a beach ball core, because the problem with the old pumpkins tended to be that the insides were a nightmare to paint and waterproof. These guys have a beautiful, smooth inside, and with the new schemata of use, they tend to look a little bit more pumpkin-like. In this video, I plan to show you exactly how to make them. Many techniques are the exact same as the last pumpkin version. Um, let's jump on in and get going with the recipe. Okay, here's what you're going to need to get this project taken care of. You're going to need a beach ball. There are variable sizes. The bigger the beach ball you take, the longer the project would take. If you're a first timer kicking off, I'd recommend a 6 to 12 inch beach ball. Something small just to get you going through. You're going to need some newspaper to tear into strips. And you're going to need some flour to make your mache mix. Included with that flour in the mache mix, you're going to need some glue, either white glue or wood glue. Wood glue is technically better, and I recommend you grab a uh, gallon size of it. You're going to need some water. You're going to need some sort of mixer, being it a cake mixer, stand mixer, or whatever that happens to be. You're going to need a paint brushes. Yes, a paint brushes. A, a mini paint brushes. You're going to need a big one for laying uh, coverage of mache paste and probably some small ones for detailed painting. You're going to need a cellulose insulation for your paper clay. For that also, you're going to need some drywall joint compound. A little bit of wire is very handy for the stem, uh, usually about 14 gauge or so. Um, you're going to need a big mixer to handle the paper clay mixing. I recommend a drill with a paint mixing head on it. You'll need a pen or pencil for sculpting some of the lines in the pumpkin. And lastly, you're going to need paint. Quite a bit of paint, well, depending on the size of the thing. You'll need some white or some black, depending on if you want a light pumpkin or a dark pumpkin. You'll need some orange, some yellow, some green, some brown. You know, pumpkin colors. I mean, it's not that hard. You will also need, if you want, I usually use a uh, paint called Dry Lock because I like my stuff to be relatively waterproof. And for a outer coat to protect it, you'll need some spar varnish or your own preferential clear coat. I, I also have some chidi extras that I use, and I'll just include this here as an example. Uh, I use some silicone sculpting tools or wood sculpting tools. I've got myself a little tiny stand mixer and uh, I'm really loving this airbrush thing, so I used one of those. But they are not needed, at least the last three, the silicone sculpting tools, stand mixer, and airbrush, but the rest of them are stuff that you will need for the project. Hello, it has been quite a while, but I am back and it is time to talk about beach ball pumpkins. In almost every regard, I would say superior to stuffed trash bags in terms of ease and facility. So, to do a beach ball pumpkin, what you need to do is get yourself a bowl. Absolutely, just a bowl, because otherwise, this is going to happen. Left, right, center all over the place and you will hate your life and you will hate everything about it so 
bowl, bucket, something that will stop your beach ball from running all over the place. Beach balls come into all shapes and sizes, which will mean you have full customizability of your pumpkin. Now, some people are going, how are you going to get the ridging on the side? Don't you want to clamp down on it, cover it with tape? You could. You could do some intro stages like that. You could have a form that way to start out, but I find it's much easier to do with paper clay towards the end of the process. But get the beach ball of the size you want. Make sure you have something that'll make sure it won't roll around on you. And make sure that when you start off, your inflation apparatus is at the bottom. We do not want to cover it up because later on we're going to let the air out of this thing and pull it right out of our pumpkin to be used again and again and again. Once you've got it inflated, do a quick quality control check. Just put your ear to it, give a little squeeze, make sure you don't hear any hissing, don't squeeze it so much that it pops, I would think that would be obvious, but you never know. But give it a little squeeze, make sure you didn't, you know, buy the 50 cent wish beach ball and it's going to quit on you halfway through. Obviously you can reinflate it, but it's just nice to know that you've got that stability when you start and you're not gonna walk back in on your project to find it's totally collapsed. Then position your inflation on the bottom of your stand. And just as if it was a normal trash bag pumpkin, we're gonna just start layering, so. Get your smoosh, grab yourself a paintbrush, grab yourself some paper strips, and just like a regular normal pumpkin, we're going to paint on our goop. These strips are a little bit wide for me, so you may see me tearing them a bit smaller throughout the process. We just lay it on, grab your brush. Coat it over, layer another one, and we begin the long, boring process of getting approximately six layers onto our pumpkin. So I'm going to melt my brain on this for a while, and I will see you when it's all said and done. All right, I've just put on one layer of mache. One consequential item that happens with almost all these is that you get more overlap of your strips towards the top of the beach ball. Consequently, this upper layer here will get thicker and bulkier faster than this rim layer down here. So there's a couple of things you need to do. Every now and again, send a few strips over the top, which I'm about to do. And another thing you can do is switch up every now and again, and rather than sending your strips top to bottom continually, you send a horizontal layer around the equator of the ball. And this will bulk up this somewhat, just by consequence, neglected section, and make sure that you have relatively even thickness throughout. As long as it's stable, we don't care, but we also don't want this collapsing on us halfway through either. 